Thank you to the Waru community drummers for providing music as we gathered for our celebration. You know, in 2020, we had a totally virtual pride celebration. Last year in 2021, we had a small group of in-person guests with us and uh, several others joining us virtually. And this year we are back in person and it's great to see so many friends in here. And since we weren't sure if the weather was going to cooperate, we moved the program inside. Our plan was to go outside for the countdown and illumination at the conclusion of this program. But if you guys bear with us, we're gonna play it by ear and see what the weather does. Thank you to all who joined us here this evening. The tradition of lighting City Hall is the official kickoff of Pride Month in the city. We wanna reassure all of our residents that Columbus is open and welcoming to all. After all, that is the Columbus way. Thank you, Mayor Ginther, Council President Hardin, other council members that are joining us, Auditor Kilgore and Denzel Porteous for being here with us this evening. And thank you to the members of the Gay Men's Chorus who will be here with us a little later in the program. We have an excellent program planned for you tonight. We will recognize a distinguished leader with the Shella Barger Illuminator Award and Light City Hall with Pride Colors, making it crystal clear to everyone that Columbus is an open and welcoming community for all. Thank you, Mayor Ginther and Council President Hardin for your bold and thoughtful leadership. It is now my pleasure to introduce a leader who is deeply committed to our city and our residents. Please join me in welcoming Mayor Andrew J. Ginther to the podium. Good evening and happy Pride. It is great to be with you and I want to thank Council President Hardin and the members of City Council. I don't have the keys to this chamber anymore and they told me that I have to be out of here by sundown so I'm going to talk quickly here this evening but uh, great to be with you and to uh, the auditor, uh, to the members of council, to our special award recipient an incredible dynamic leader, Simone, so excited to, to celebrate you, your leadership, and all that you do for our community tonight, uh, and so excited to be part of that. It's great to be back together again. We've experienced so much, and the world has been transformed so dramatically since we were last able to gather as a community on the steps of City Hall for Pride Illumination. But despite such rapid and sweeping change, and in many cases because of it, we continue to press forward with renewed focus and intensity to right the wrongs of the past and address the inequities of our society. At the same time, we've witnessed brazen attacks on the core values underlying some of our nation's noblest ideals and highest aspirations, including unconscionable limits on what our children can learn, what they can say, what care they can receive, and what sports they can play because of who they are or whom they love. As your mayor, I stand with you tonight to state unequivocally that we reject any and all forms of discrimination, as well as any action that seeks to erase, erase hard-fought gains for equality, acceptance, and representation. Present circumstances can seem troubling, and the future is uncertain. But know that Columbus is proud to celebrate, honor, and protect our LGBTQ plus friends and loved ones, especially members of the transgender community and our transgender youth. They have faced so much and targeted by 
legislatures all over America. But here in Columbus, we embrace our city's diversity. We derive strength and knowledge from it, and we stand in firm solidarity with our neighbors as we fend off cruel attacks and work to realize the full promise of a just, equitable, and kind society. Pride represents courage, integrity, honesty, and authenticity. It represents justice, and it represents love, community, compassion, and inclusion. These are the values we must carry with us as we recall the lessons of our past and move into a future in which we continue to fight for full, unfettered equality. No matter the hardships or setbacks that we will continue to face, know that your city sees you, your city accepts you and your family. And we will always advocate for the right of everyone in our community to live freely, authentically, and peacefully. Pride belongs to the people. It always has, and it always will. So let us show Ohio and the rest of the nation what a diverse, thriving, and accepting community looks like and the power it holds for absolutely everyone to live their very best lives and reach their full potential. I'm excited to celebrate with you tonight and I look forward to celebrating with you in the weeks, months, and years ahead. Happy Pride, Columbus. Please welcome the person with the keys to this chamber, uh, our fearless leader of Columbus City Council, our Council President, Shannon Harden. Happy Pride, Columbus. It really is beautiful to have everybody in chambers and mayor. The old keys still work. It's a secret. I mean, one size fits all. Um, thank you all uh, and welcome back to City uh, Council Chambers. It actually is fitting that we're in the room, in the chambers. We have a, a thing here at council where we really encourage folks to come use this room other than on Monday nights and especially other communities, diverse communities, because um, this has to be a place where everybody feels welcome. This has to be a place, this room in particular, where we debate some of the most pressing uh, issues and talk about our dreams and hopes and aspirations for our community. They happen in this room and so often folks don't feel welcome in this room. And so I think it's very appropriate as we come back and celebrate Pride that we do so in council chambers. So welcome to your house, the People's House Council Chambers as we celebrate Pride. I do wanna recognize uh, a few folks. First of all, thank the planning team that planned tonight. Would you recognize the folks who put this together? <laughs> Director Scott, Linda in my office, and so many others. Um, the mayor already recognized uh, Auditor Kilgore, who you'll hear from next. Thank you so much for being a fearless champion of our community and a leader here at City Hall. Um, also want to recognize the way I stay council president is by recognizing my colleagues. So when I say their names, if you can give them a boisterous um, applause, um, would you help me recognize Councilmember Lord Esperosa de Padilla? Thank you, thank you. Councilmember Shayla Favor. Councilmember Nick Bankston. And Councilmember Emmanuel Remy. I also want to shout out because it's not every day that um, we have a leader, um, well, I won't say that, but I've been, we've been so blessed by the leadership of our Columbus Division of Police. Uh, I think I saw the police chief here, uh, Police Chief Elaine Bryant, are you here? Would you uh, recognize Chief Bryant? And I see our assistant chief back there as well. Welcome to Council Chambers. Um, and my last acknowledgement is for Chris Kozad. As many of you know, Chris uh, chairs our Community Relations 
Council. She's currently in Florida with her wife, Gloria, and every year she's a critical part of the planning process for this event. Uh, I know she is watching, so thank you from a warm Florida. Chris, it's hot here too. Um, <laughs> but we're th we are thinking about you today. As we usher in LGBTQ uh, Pride Month, I think it is critical to acknowledge our community's past and how far we have come in the past 50 years, while keeping in mind that there is still much work to do ahead. Around this time of year, I often turn to folks who came before me. It was March 15th, 1985, when a headline ran in the dispatch. It said, gay right foes target Hammond. For folks who don't know who Hammond was, he was the first African-American council president. His name was Jerry Hammond. Um, I'll go on to read the, more of the, that article. Although Columbus City Council soundly defeated le legislation to prohibit employment discrimination based on sexual orientation, political fallout from the issue might linger. A group opposed to the legislation went on to recall council president Jerry Hammond. After the vote Monday night, a spokesman for the group said, I don't think the issue is over just yet. And while our president of council, Jerry Hammond, was never recalled for standing up for gay rights, I think we can all acknowledge that this spokesperson unfortunately was right. This issue is not over yet. Just as former Stonewall Columbus Executive Director Craig Covey did 38 years ago, our friends at Equality Ohio were testifying today on something that deeply impacts the LGBTQ community. The venue may have moved from City Hall to the State House, but the underlying questions have not. Do you all, do all of us deserve equal rights? Should members of the majority have the ability to dis uh, discriminate against the minority? Unfortunately, whether it is House Bill 616 or House Bill 454, some folks think they can make our community and particularly our kids' political footballs, and that's wrong. But as we stand strong in opposition to hatred and bigotry, it is also so important that we celebrate our community, that we have time to make joy for ourselves and acknowledge our success, that we uplift our families and our neighborhoods rather than letting others divide us. That is what we are here to do tonight. I am happy to be here with you to, in our community to celebrate community. Uh, I look forward to a happy and safe pride. It is now my honor to introduce my friend and like I said, a champion in our community, Auditor Kilgore. Hey, good evening friends, happy Pride Month. Um, I think all of my colleagues have been acknowledged in the front, so I'll just say a hearty welcome to Steve Schellebarger, a dear mentor, a dear friend, and I think, I think the first time he's probably come into city hall chambers, the city council chambers, not expecting to raise hell. So nice change for you tonight, sir. Well done. It's nice to hear these comments. Um, Mayor, council president, thank you for starting this off. If I were more creative, if I could sing, I would sing to you tonight. If I had thought this out a little bit better, I would have probably had the drummers back me up with like a nice slow jam. Um, but I am neither. Um, but I did write some words that I, I hope um, mean a little something. Tonight's the night to make a fuss for you, for me, and all LGBTQ+. Because City Hall will soon be lit. It's Pride Month, but let us not forget how far we've come to be here today, our thanks to the heroes who've led the way. From the activist of 1970, marching for civil rights, to the growing movement today, still fighting the fight. For equality, acceptance, inclusion, freedom. To love who we love and feel safe in our homes. Since Stonewall, we've certainly come a long way, but yet in Ohio, there's still a struggle just to say gay. So on this first day of June, let us show our pride by illuminating City Hall and refusing to hide. Let all the world see from this symbolic display that Columbus welcomes everyone and we also say gay.
Thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep my day job, but thank you for that. That's real kind of you. Um, I now have the great pleasure of, of introducing, <laughs> take it when we can get it, right? Um, I have the great pleasure of introducing someone who is um, a tireless and, and, and fairly fearless advocate and an exceptional leader. Um, and he did something today that really made me smile. He and his husband were married a little bit before, but today he acknowledged it on social media. And of course, um, as I was driving here today and I was thinking, is he really spending his honeymoon tonight inside of City Hall Chambers? And I'm just gonna say, yeah, he is. Um, it's our fearless leader of Stonewall Columbus, Denzel Porteous. I'm not sure I wanna follow that. I mean, I, 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 uh, I, my, my rhyme and my lyric is not so good. Um, but thank you so much. Uh, Mayor Ginther, Council President Hardin, Council members. This is the most council members I've seen at this event before for, that, that I can remember, so I'm excited. Thank you. <laughs> Auditor Kilgore, Director William Scott, I thank each of you for working to make space for this very important moment in recognition, honor, and celebration of the LGBTQIA community here in Columbus, across the region, and the globe. Pride. It is important to know our history so that we know where, how we arrived here in this moment. It is important to know our history so we can fight for the members of our community who continue to be disenfranchised. LGBTQI pride is a part of American history. And while LGBTQI history has often not been told, we must do the work of sharing the stories of those who have shaped our American history. The Stonewall Uprising is a part of American history, and they were protests against police brutality, protests against the injustices enacted on a people, the queer community. We stand in a moment of shared history when queer identities are being attacked, when the injustices enacted toward the LGBTQI community is at an all-time high, in particular towards youth identities. Children and young people are unable to create spaces for themselves. Adults have made it that way. We are in a period of our history when the spaces that we created for young people to be safe are no longer feeling safe. When we who have privilege and agency in spaces are able to make those spaces safe for others who must exist in these spaces, it is the work that we must do. We must be accomplices. While the privilege and the power I have may be limited, I know that I must use this privilege and power to make space and fight for the most disenfranchised among us. That is pride. At its core, our pride is about a desire to be happy, a desire to step out fully into the world as we were always truly meant to be. That is why black trans activist Marsha P. Johnson and others stepped out stepped out to protest so they could live freely in their truth, in their pride. We must know our history in order to do the work so we do not repeat the bad parts of that history. Columbus's first Pride March was in 1981 and saw 200 people, some of whom wore face coverings to protect their identities, marching from The Ohio State University to the State House, not only in commemoration of the 1969 Stonewall Uprising, but also in order to draw light to the community of LGBTQIA identities here in central Ohio who continued to live in secret, afraid to live publicly in their truth. 41 years on and during our last in-person Pride March, the city welcomed over 750,000 individuals in celebration and recognition of pride. And while we may be proud, we are still under attack. Today, the LGBTQI community continues to fight for acceptance and equality as some of the most anti-LGBTQI legislation is presented across our country, targeting LGBTQI youth and transgender identities. And where in 2022, we have seen the murders of 14 trans and gender non-conforming individuals. Pride Month is a celebration of our community being seen, centering our pride on the people. The queer patrons of Cooper Donuts in 1959, the trans and BIPOC people who protested at Stonewall in 1969, those who marched on Washington in 1979 for lesbian and gay rights, the 49 people who were killed in a mass shooting inside Pulse 
a gay nightclub in 2016, the Black Pride Four at our 2017 Pride March, the 57 transgender and gender nonconforming people who were shot or killed in 2021, Today, let us be emboldened by our history, by our people, by our leaders of pride. Let us be inspired to shape a future that we create together that includes intentional acts of grace, accountability, and inclusion. As we step back into a world where we have a responsibility to step back into a world as who we were always truly meant to be, a creation of our own working to create a more inclusive and affirming community here in Columbus and across the world. This year, we celebrate pride. Let us celebrate and honor the people, the marginalized, the unseen, underappreciated, underserviced identities in our LGBTQI community who continue to fight for equity, equality, and liberation. The history of our pride is about people fighting to be seen. Let us in this moment, this month of pride, Celebrate and honor those who have fought to get us here, those who risked their lives simply by living their truth. This is our pride. Happy Pride Month, Columbus. Thank you, Denzel. At this time, I would now like to invite all of our speakers to return to the podium and hear remarks from Council President Hardin for the presentation of the Shellabarger Illuminator Award. I was say, I think it's really appropriate to have uh, the, Mr. Stephen Shellabarger here to actually present the award. Council members, you want to come up? Tonight I have the pleasure of presenting the Stephen Schallerberger Illuminator Award. The Illuminator Award recognizes an individual who is committed to creating a more inclusive Columbus through their outstanding advocacy for LGBTQ plus rights. Past recipients include Gloria McCauley, Andrew Levitt, AKA Nina West, Letha Pugh, I think Letha's in the house too. Ms. Letha, uh, Ms. Aaron Upchurch, uh, and of course, our own Mr. Schellerberger himself. This year, we are so excited to present the Schellerberger Illuminator Award to Siobhan Boyd Nelson. As a black queer woman, Siobhan has been a steadfast champion for racial equity, working both inside and outside of systems to create change. There is a particular line Siobhan once said that always stuck with me. She said, what intersectionality is, is a recognition that oppression and mar marginalization don't line up and take turns. That is so true. <laughs> I believe she truly puts this message into practice in her advocacy. Currently in her professional work, Siobhan is the Deputy Director for Equity Ohio, Equality Ohio, I apologize. She has an extensive background in advocacy for LGBTQ plus rights, such as serving in leadership positions at Link Out, Scarlet and Gay, and the Legacy Fund of the Columbus Foundation. She earned her BA in legal communication at Howard University in 2002 and came to Columbus to earn her JD from the Ohio State University Moritz School of Law in 2005. She serves on the board of Blackout and Proud and has been named a member of the Columbus Business First 40 Under 40 Class of 2019 and received the Create Columbus Visionary Award. It is our pleasure to present uh, the Stephen Schallerberger Illuminator, Illuminator Award to Ms. Siobhan Boyd Nelson. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. Council President Hardin, Mayor Ginther, members of council, Auditor Kilgore, Director Scott Williams, Steve, Denzel, my family, my chosen family, my friends. Happy Pride! And thank you, thank you. It is an absolute dream come true to be able to stand here in this room in front of you, this beautiful community that I love so deeply and say those words that mean so much to me, to say those words authentically. I was a little black girl who was born and raised on the Far East side of Columbus. And I will tell you that this dream right now that I'm living out was a dream that I didn't even dare dream at that time. It was a dream that I could never put into words, but it lived, it lived in the quietest and secretest parts of my heart. I wasn't supposed to be here in Columbus making my life here. When I went to college at Howard University in Washington, D.C., I fell in love with that big city. And let me tell you, in 1998, when I left, we didn't even have Easton or Polaris, <laughs> right? There was a lot to fall in love with in D.C. But when I returned back here for an amazing opportunity at the Ohio State University Moritz College of Law, I returned to a city that was different, that was changing, that was evolving. I returned to a city that was ready for me. And when in 2005 it became apparent that I was not going back to DC like I thought I was, and that Columbus was going to be my home, I made up my mind. In fact, I think it was a little bit of the Columbus spirit in me. Because I said, you know what? All right, I am going to bloom where I am planted. I am going to make this city. I am going to find my people. I know they're here. I believe in that. And I did, here in this city, that opened its arms to me a very young, very naive young attorney who was freshly out of the closet and a new mom. And you asked me questions, you invited me in, you allowed me to say yes. And when I said yes, the city responded yes, and it was a back and forth of a lot of yeses, and, and here I am. From Kaleidoscope Youth Center, Mayor, that is a gem. I tell you, that is a gem. From the staff who are so dedicated and so loving to the youth. And I'll tell you, they taught me more than any law degree ever could. They are amazing. To Stonewall Columbus, where yet another dream came true that I had the opportunity to help build a more beautiful building to house our community center. What a privilege. And now here at Equality Ohio, doing this work not just here but across the state and taking this beautiful, progressive, inclusive spirit across the state of Ohio. But it's not enough. So I tell you that even as I stand here, just giddy with excitement, because I am living the dream that I never dared dream. It has come true. I'm not satisfied. And I don't want you to be satisfied either. I'm not satisfied because I don't want my dreams to come true. I want dreams to come true for kids who didn't have what I had growing up, 
for kids who didn't have an amazing, loving father and mother and big sister who cared for me and spoiled me. Amazing schools that I could attend, the chance to attend a world-class university, both in DC and here. That's a lot of privilege, y'all. So the fact that this dream came true, yeah, that's great. And Columbus should be proud, but it should not be satisfied. It should not be satisfied until the dreams of young black trans kids, until they don't have to hold their dreams secret in their hearts. When they can walk into a classroom and be recognized for who they are with simply recognizing their name and their pronouns because we know that doing so could save their lives. The idea that one day my grandchildren could walk into a classroom and not be able to talk about their grandparents. Until we know that in Ohio, no young person who has questions about their gender identity will be denied the scientific, medically approved, affirming and life-saving care that they deserve as citizens of this country. Until those dreams come true, this city has work to do. And so I ask you, if not now, when? If not today, if not on this June 1st, when our staff at Equality Ohio has been at the State House all week fighting tooth and nail, after weeks and weeks of being there fighting tooth and nail, and being at city places and fighting tooth and nail, and still in this moment, bracing ourselves for the State House to attack us yet again. If not now, on this June 1st, 2022, when? So this is an invitation, not an obligation. I invite you, whoever you are in this room, whether you are an activist or an advocate, an ally, a friend, a family member, how have you stood up for LGBTQ plus people? And if not now, when will you? Thank you to the city of Columbus for being a city that is willing to accept such challenges. Thank you to my beautiful family. Thank you to Marcellus for putting up with a very loud mother. And thank you to my amazing spouse, Shay. And Mayor Genther, I will tell you, there is nothing that tells you that this is a great city more than the fact that this amazing, heat-loving Southerner from Shreveport, Louisiana, <laughs> has built a thriving business here and loves calling Columbus home. I truly, truly love you all. And I cannot wait to keep doing this work with you. Thank you, Columbus. Happy Pride. Wow, thank you, Siobhan, and thank you for that challenge. At this moment, I would like to invite the Columbus Gay Men's Chorus to share a selection with us. And after that, we will proudly illuminate 
the People's House City Hall.
All right, everybody. Thank you again. Can we give the chorus another round of applause? That was amazing. At this time, I'd like to invite all of our council members, our speakers, and our award winner, award winner up to the podium, and we will do our 10-second countdown inside, and you will see City Hall light up on the magic screens. Thank God for technology. <laughs> We ready, group? Oh, nice. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Happy Pride, Columbus. <laughs> there it is. Thank you, everyone. That concludes our program for this evening. Please make sure to look at the beautiful lights on your way out. Thank you all. Thank you.